The following program is brought to you in part by the film Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace. Welcome to another Leon China Report. We have a really eclectic and exciting show tonight. For our, for our 100th anniversary, the folks the National Yiddish Theater is turning 100 years old this year, 2015. From a little theater company that was created in 1915 to be a, um, an, a, an alternative to the very popular Yiddish theater that was going on at the time, 12 Yiddish theaters on 2nd Avenue with 3,000 seats each, running 14 shows a week constantly, thousands of people going. The Volksbühne was created to present more um, literary works, socially act responsible works, um, uh, plays with a message. M m material like Shalom Aleichem, like I.L. Peretz, etc., etc. In all these years, the Volksbühne became the last and the only Yiddish theater. Um, and in the late 90s, I came along and I suggested to the uh, management, look, you're the only uh, theater around. You have, a, you have a responsibility, you have an opportunity to, to not, not only preserve, but to, to develop this art form for future generations. Long story short, we did that. Here we are, their hundredth anniversary. Now the Yiddish, now the Volksbühne presents not only um, theaters, but, but not only theaters in Yiddish, of course, with English supertitles, but concerts, lectures, kids programs, um, and we said, we said, okay, how are we going to mark our hundredth anniversary? How, what are we going to do to make some noise? Because people say, oh, Yiddish theater, what's that? What's Yiddish? So. You know, we decided we're going to create a international Jewish performing arts festival. It was it was originally um, conceived as a tribute to my mother, the late Hanam Latek, who was a noted uh, musicologist and collector of Yiddish song. And um, in the past, in, in you know, she she passed away a year and a half ago. So the festival is now in tribute to her work. And what we've done is invited. Um, artists from all over the world to come and to present works not only in Yiddish but works present works that are based on Jewish culture. We have in five different venues um, 12 theater companies coming from France, Poland, Romania, Australia, South Africa, Russia, is Israel of course. Uh, full companies, full productions, not only in Yiddish but in different languages and presenting in different venues all over the city. Climb aboard, we've got some fish to fry. When you need money to please the honey, tell her no, your fishing ain't a lie. That's what I say. There are times you might leave empty handed, but odds are in your favor, chance will buy. Be prepared to hold on to your reels, boys. Dig in your heels, boys. The fish are big, so don't give up the fight. Sinker. You're on the brink, sir. All signs are pointing right this way. Gotta be a winner from a lucky spinner. We're going fishing. We're going fishing today. We have concerts going on all over. We have a big opening night, opening night free concert at the Brookfield Winter Garden with the Cosmatics and Neil Sedaka and Judy Blazer and several other Broadway stars and some of the international stars presenting, presenting during the week. 
each day there are multiple events going on, so I can't I can't can't give you a. But I, you know, if you can, you know, here's a sense of the of the order. This is just sun. This is Sunday. This is Monday. You can see every day there's events going on. There's a whole film festival happening um, in different venues throughout the city, which we have a separate. Our, our website has all the information. It's it's uh, National Yiddish Theater um, dot org or m more e e easier is Kultur Fest NYC. K U L T U R F E S T N Y C dot org. We have a food festival. We're honoring Theodore Bacal at the end. It's his 91st birthday. They just came out with a new film about him. He's flying in from LA. We're going to do a nice big send off concert with him. Uh, we have a new production of the Dibbuk, of the Golem. I mean, we have the classic Yiddish theater and we have new Yiddish theater. We're also, we also sponsored a, a, play read, a play writing contest where somebody wrote a play in English about Paul Robeson, the noted African-American activist who, uh, who learned Yiddish and, and performed it in the 30s and the 40s. Uh, there'll be a food festival, there'll be, there'll be events for children, there'll be outdoor events from, at Battery Park, right overlooking the Statue of Liberty. Opening, the opening, night, opening day concert is at 1 o'clock with So Called. He's a hip-hop uh, Yiddish performance artist. He's a young, young guy who has taken old Yiddish music and combines it with new beats. And so we have a whole new expression of what Yiddish sound is to, to a whole new generation. So that's what we're doing. We're looking at this culture and saying, it's not, a, it's not by any means dead or it's not going anywhere. It's alive. It's kicking. It's new things. We have we have exciting events from Israel coming. We're bringing we're bringing the uh, Yiddish theater from uh, Tel Aviv, the Yiddish Spiel, and they're doing a whole musical review. We're bringing the 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 premier artist, the premier actress of the Habima Theater, Leah Koenig, who hasn't been here in many decades, and she's going to be doing a whole concert of her own. Bulbes, kartop. Sintek Bulbes, Muntek Bulbes, Dieste Gemit war Bulbes, Donnerstag und Freitag Bulbes, Schabes war ein Nobel auf Bulbekegel, Sintek wieder Bulbes, Wieder Bulbes, Ober Bulbes, Sintek Muntek Bulbes, Dieste Gemit war Bulbes, Lauf noch einmal Nobel auf Bulbekegel, Sintek wieder Bulbes, Ober Bulbes, Wieder Bulbes, 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 at Joe's Pub, we're doing 12 events. Joe's Pub at the, at the Public Theater. Public Theater, you know, was the old Hayas uh, building. The Hayas was the center, was the place where uh, hundreds of thousands of Jewish immigrants and Polish and Italian, Chinese, all came not Polish Chinese to the Hayas, they came there, but Ellis Island, which is where the museum is. But at the, so the Joe's Pub will be hosting 12 events with different artists. The next artist who's actually coming in here in a few minutes is Ron Rifkin, the uh, Tony Award winning TV actor who rediscovered his Yiddish um, melodies from, he, he grew up in a religious uh, uh, background and then he realized, you know, he spoke Yiddish as a kid and he knew all these Yiddish songs. So he's doing a whole program and he's inviting his friends like Deborah Monk, a Broadway star, and and Joel Gray, of course, uh, his buddy, who uh, is going to be doing a number with him. So at, that's at Joe's Pub on uh, June seventeenth. Uh, every day of the week from June. 13th to the 21st, there are multiple events, something for every generation. Um, there's no need to understand Yiddish because much of the events are musical events, and if there are th events in Yiddish, they're always with super titles. It's so just about getting the word out. As, people, as, as soon as people hear, when, when you go to a, pol a concert in Poland and they do a, a, a big, a big uh, klezmer music concert, you have thousands of Poles out out there listening to this. Why? Because the Polish national television supports it. We don't have national television supporting us so that we, you know, but if people heard this music, this infectious sound, people would be there. So we're hoping to make this sound in Central Park on June 16th with the world's leading can cantors and Hasidic superstars. It's going to be a, an incredibly rocking band um, and we hope to have, you know, th thousands of people out there just, you know, Grooving to uh, 
to the sounds of, of uh, you know, Yiddish, cantorial, and Hasidic music. You know, we wanted to make sure that, that, that people understood why, why we're doing this. So we're, we asked NYU uh, Jewish Studies Department to conceive of an academic symposium. And they've invited um, uh, professors from all over the world to do a two-day symposium with like 25 different lectures going on at the Museum of Jewish Heritage. The center of the festival will be at the Museum of Jewish Heritage, which I'm happy to announce is going to be the home, is the new home of the, of the folks, of the National Yiddish Theater. National Yiddish Theater has not had a home since the early 70s. Um, so the, Nas the Museum of Jewish Heritage has invited us to have our um, permanent home there. So we're initiating that relationship with this festival. Uh, this is a manifestation of how rich our Jewish culture is. And I, and I say Jewish, and I don't say Yiddish for, for a reason. You know, um, y Yiddish, the language without tradition and without the people and without the customs of Yiddish, of Jewish tradition, is, is, is just a language. But we, what Yiddish culture represents is a link to a whole culture and a whole um, way of life. What this festival is, is, is showing with its multi, um, multitude of events is how rich and how, what level of, of artistry we have people from all over the world. And for, for the 100 artists, 180 artists that are coming, we have you know, three times as many who we could not invite to this festival because of, of time limitations, etc. But we hope to make this uh, either an annual or a biannual event. So the fact that the, that the National uh, Muse the Museum of Jewish Heritage reached out to us on our 100th birthday to, and invited us to come in is a huge thing for us. This theater has been, a, has been wandering Jews for, for all these years. We've been in all different kinds of venues. For us to have a permanent home, which if you go to the museum, you see it overlooking the Statue of Liberty, overlooking Ellis Island. How poignant is that for us and for our audiences and for young kids who come to this museum looking at this incredible, these incredible exhibits and then we'll be able to see live performances, young people performances, old, you know, and they'll be, be able to get a sense of what this culture is and sounds like. So that, that marriage between the, the, the Museum of Jewish Heritage and National Yiddish Theater is a, is bashert, is a bashert thing, it's a match made out of heaven and we're very excited about it. It's impossible to, 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 to assess how much, you know, what six million souls uh, meant to Jewish culture or any culture. It's impossible. We can't, I'm no, we'll never know. But it's, you know, we think about the, not just, cult, not just Yiddish culture, but technology. Uh, artists, um, uh, you know, look at what Israel is producing today. Look at the, look at the, the advances in science that Israel produces. I, uh, you know, I, I look at the Holocaust and I say, six million Jews, six million in, you know, you know, souls with 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 promise, all lost. So it's impossible to assess. But here we are today, two, you know, seventy years later, and going strong. We're 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 taking this out of you know the small, closed circle of Yiddish speakers and saying it. This is a culture for everyone. Welcome to another Leon China Report, and we have another eclectic show. We have a musical director from the Volksbienen and also the executive director, Zalman Lutik. Zalman, welcome to the show. Thanks, Larry. I'm delighted to be here. You're a great musician, Juilliard trained, and uh, I see you're uh, into the Yiddish theater. Why don't you go to Lincoln Center and play for the New York Philharmonic? Well, you know, I was brought up in a home where Yiddish was a uh, living and breathing uh, entity. Where I, were your parents from? My father was born in Poland. He spent the war years in mm -hmm. Shanghai. My mother born in Brooklyn. And they came together from the uh, Weinreich Yiddish course out in UCLA. And um, from when I was a little kid, I just remember the vibrant sounds of Yiddish filling my house. Now, people who spoke Yiddish at that time weren't necessarily Orthodox Jews or religious Jews. No, no, uh, actually, uh, I mean, Yiddish was the lingua franca of, of Eastern European Jews right. in general. And they came to America, everybody spoke Yiddish. Right. Then it was about wanting to become Americans. 
So, um, but I, I come from a, I come from a, originally from a non-religious household. I'll tell you why I say that. Yeah. When I was in the Soviet Union, trying to bring Jews out of uh, the Soviet Union, uh, people would talk to me in Yiddish, and they were KGB agents. Right. And it was Kagebaga, and I couldn't get over that. The fact that this was, uh, in a sense, uh, the language of my people, and these people were trapping me into admissions of, uh, of quasi-criminal activities right. in the synagogue. That's why, I, you know, a lot of people think if you speak Yiddish, you're an Orthodox Jew, or at least a very religious Jew. It's not true. It was the language of the people. Right, and Yiddish really it transcends every, every, you know, every part of the Jewish spectrum. I mean, you have, um, you know, the Yiddish culture accompanied the Jewish people from, from, from the early from Well, the it's early a mixture ages. of German and a lot of Slavic and, languages. And, and Hebrew and Slavic languages, but, but, it, but it has a literature and, and music and culture of its own. And the Volksbühne, the Yiddish theater that I run, we're committed to making sure that this language and this culture be heard for generations to come. Because we believe that as American Jews, we have a part of that in our, in our DNA. What does YIVO do? YIVO is an institution. YIVO is a, is a research institution that, that, you know, that houses the world's largest collection of, of documents. But what we do is bring the, bring the material alive. So we, theater. Theater and music. We, pref we, we, just, uh, we did uh, 168 performances this year. It was our 90th season. All, all bilingual. So we're not talking about anybody's, no one's left in the cold. So you get non-Jewish people we get coming? Non, we get non-Jewish, for our recent show on 2nd Avenue that Mike Burstein started and that we're going to be bringing back in the fall, had non-Jewish people come in and they had a great time. Who wrote on 2nd Avenue? I, I wrote it with my cousin Moshe Rosenfeld. And what's it about? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a musical travelogue through the golden age of 2nd Avenue. We take you to, those, to that time when how many theaters were running on Second Avenue? 20, 30 at the same time. Thousands of Jews were going to the theater all the time. Why? Because this was. Are you able to get young people yeah, to the theater? Yeah, we're getting young people. The interesting thing is that the the the, liter the the show is completely in English. The songs are in Yiddish, and everything is in super titles. So every, all the Yiddish you see translated on top, and the dialogue is in English. So we're giving people a taste in the language that they can understand about what this vibrant time was. We're talking about you know the Al Josens, the Eddie Cantors, Danny Kay. They all came to the Yiddish theater. Right. It's all documented. And we know it. So here we are bringing this to life in a way that, you know, I brought my son's class. He goes to the Schechter in Manhattan. He's a high school graduate. He's what is Schechter? The Solomon Schechter of the high school. He's graduate. The school. The school. He's graduate. I brought their whole graduating class as a gift to them to see it. They never saw anything like it. Well, the audience should understand Zero Mostel, Red Buttons. Uh, sure. All of these fellows came out of the Yiddish Walter theater. Walter Matthau. Walter Matthau, yeah. Jack Benny, right. uh, George Burns. The right. whole comedy of the 20th century and, really came and from then the take Yiddish it a theater. And take it a couple of generations closer to us. I mean, you know, you have to look at Neil, you have to look at Neil Simon. You have to look at at uh, at, um, at uh, uh, Billy Crystal. You have to look at Seinfeld as as nods. To, to, that, to that great time, to that time of Yiddish vaudeville. But you think that they speak Yiddish? You bet. You Billy Crystal have, have you speaks seen, Yiddish? Have you seen 700 Sundays? I did. Yeah, so there's a lot of Yiddish in there. Does, well, it wasn't, does he, it does wasn't he speak, whole show no, Yiddish. No, 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 no. no. no and th neither is ours. You know, it's not, we're, not, we're not looking to convert people to speaking in Yiddish. We, the, the you idea, want to keep the culture alive. Yeah, and we feel that it's an important part of the... Of the of comedy, the by the way, in Yiddish cannot be replaced. That's right. Shalom Aleichem and right. his comedy. And the there, music. There's and the, things you can say yeah. in Yiddish that no one can replicate right. in English. There's no way. No. And the, and the music, I mean, the music is an international universal language. So you hear some Yiddish music, some klezmer music. It goes, it goes straight to your kitschkes. <laughs> artistic director of the National Yiddish Theater and the music and the music director of tonight's evening and um, basically it was it was my, my idea to to celebrate our hundredth anniversary with this celebration of this iconic uh, musical uh, that was written for the uh, American American stage a piece that um, 
I would say I would call them geniuses: Joe Stein, Sheldon Harnick, Jerry Bach, Jerry Robbins, and of course Hal Prince conceived of this piece based on the Shalom Aleichem stories, and that's the connection for us as we as we the National Yiddish Theater goes into our hundredth anniversary. We thought, what better way than to take this piece of the uh, this icon of the uh, of the American musical theater and celebrate its um, resonance and longevity. And as you no doubt have heard, Fiddler has been performed more than any musical ever written. It's translated in every language. It's There isn't a day in the 50 years that Fiddler hasn't been performed all over the, all over the world. So uh, in our own way, we're celebrating this, uh, this historic moment. If I were a rich man, all day long I did a bit of fun. If I were a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work hard. If I were a bit of rich, idle, diddle, diddle, diddle man. <laughs> 51 years ago I met yeah. this guy yeah. we did a film called Salah Shabbati yeah. and he, this man is Yoram uh, Gaon this man is the, the, the legendary Chaim Topol and uh, we did a film in 1963 when I, I came to Israel with my family and there was a film called Salah we did, Rachel. We did a tour yeah, we did the tourists in the film. Yes. So my family and I, my parents and I, and he was in the, it was a scene in the, oh, first of all, when, when we arrived on the plane, yeah, and right. Salah is counting his children, yeah. and I'm counting my suitcases. Right. And I said, excuse me, and you said, in Allah Abu, and I said, thank you. <laughs> and then there's a scene in the forest where we come to see the trees that, yeah. we, that, the the, trees the, that, that they planted. Supposedly planted in their name. Yes, so there's one you know family, the you know the story, but this is I'm here, and then a few years later, I when, came to see him playing on, in the Yiddish field, in the Megillah, in the yes. Megillah with and my and parents. Your parents, and yeah. I knew his parents were there, right? Yeah. No. I'm sorry to hear that, but uh, there were wonderful parents yeah. and a sister, and uh, it was a lovely, lovely family, really. And then a few years later, I got the call. To London to do Fiddler, yeah. and, he, and he knew very little English. Yeah. Yeah. And so one so I day, asked, I asked uh, him to uh, uh, go with me through the songs, the, li yeah. the, the lines in English, because I was born but in, had, in New York. But he had an American accent. Yes, it was. <laughs> it wasn't good enough. <laughs> it was. So, so I, I took a, a British, a British, English, a British. English speaking English, yeah. because I was from New York. Yeah. They, they saw Sala. I mean, right. He, 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 he mentioned Sala. Sala was a, a film that I played when. Well, when I was 27, I played at 55 years old, and, and they saw the film, it ran here in the, in the Carnegie uh, for about a year, so they thought it's a good idea for Fiddler in, uh, in Europe to ask that old man. The old man, yeah, the 26, so, seven-year-old so, man. So I came, I was then, I don't know, 29 or 30 to, to the auditions, and they were very disappointed. They said, where's the old where's man? Where's the old man? Did you play the son, they said? No, I said, no, no, I played the old man. <laughs> so they let me see, go on stage, and thank God, I mean, they, they made a mistake and took me. But uh, uh, let me tell you uh, that the character that you see in the film, my teacher, or the one that really opened my eyes how to play that uh, play, that part, was Rodensky.
see on the screen, at least half of it is Rodensky. No, nobody can, uh, nobody can supersede what he did in the film, and it's uh, Lanetza, as we say. It will be forever. Yeah, it you know, it's a great. It's really great. a great uh, gift I mean, to have to have that gift. I, mean, I, I admit. I'm Moshe Rosenfeld. I am the producer of this amazing event, Raising the Roof, and uh, very proud to be uh, producing yet another gala for the National Yiddish Theater Folksbina, which is my my beloved spiritual home and uh, my cause. So that's why, why we're here tonight. I was in Sophie's Choice. I was in a Midsummer Night Sex Comedy. I was in Avalon. I was in Crossing the Lancy. I played the Moyle in the Briss scene, not the other scene. The, Briss, the, the, the lead role in the Briss scene was the Moyle. Well, I uh, began as a, an actor, as we say, but uh, I had an opportunity to create a few musicals with my cousin Zalman Lotek, who was standing right behind the camera. And, um, as a writer and creator, also had the opportunity to produce all of these musicals, The Golden Land on Second Avenue, and uh, those were the days, which ended up on Broadway and uh, garnered two Tony nominations. I think it's a very, uh, it's an organic relationship. Y Yiddish theater exists to perpetuate the memory and, and the culture of uh, Eastern European Judaism and uh, Jewry and uh, Fiddler on the Roof uh, just uh, absorbed that very culture and, uh, and uh, created a, a legacy for the entire world to, uh, to mirror that, uh, that life of uh, Anatevka, which was symbolic of all the shtetls that were destroyed eventually in the Holocaust. But uh, our thousand-year culture is a very important uh, source of uh, emotional Judaism. And, uh, you know, our identities as Jews are shaped and, and informed by that culture. The, the Yiddish is, is just part of the, the Jewish uh, identity. And uh, for us to let it disappear and not to hear it uh, is... Uh, something that we can't allow. We need it for ourselves, we need it for our children. It makes us better people to be connected to that world, that ethical culture that, uh, that Sholem Aleichem wrote about and that the uh, creators of Fiddler uh, inherited. All right, so you're now the executive director and you got a big thing coming up at Carnegie Hall on June 16th. We do, and we're delighted that Mandy Patinkin has, uh, you know, he recorded this he album. He speaks Yiddish, Mandy. He, doesn't, he doesn't speak Yiddish, but he learned this, this, these Yiddish songs. He was a good friend of Joe Papp. And Joe Papp said to him once, the, Joe Papp was the, a, the uh, producer, producer of the public theater. Right. He came to Mandy and says, I want you to learn a Yiddish song, my favorite one, Yussel Yussel. So he learned it for Joe Papp, and, and since, what, since then, he learned, when he learned that, he became so enamored with the language that he decided to do a whole album called Mama Lushen. And he so came to us. Explain to the audience. Mama, Lush, Mama, Lush, Mama Lushen is, means mother tongue, and that's, the way, that's how Jews refer to Yiddish, as Mama Lushen, as the mother, as the mother tongue. He, so he, he, he looked through 50 songs. He came to me and my cousin Moshe and some other people, and to, to research the song, to hear the language, to hear us play them. And then he took them and he t took the top Broadway arrangers, conductors, and he made an incredible album of it. And he's agreed to do it for us on the stage of Carnegie Hall as his New York debut. Who was the greatest Yiddish actor, you think? Aaron Lebedev, um, Molly Pickon, maybe, you know, I mean, with Maury Schwartz. Yeah, they had a lot of them. Yeah, it was Second Avenue. Everybody yeah. used to go on it, Sunday nights. But it wasn't. But it wasn't just you know um, frivolity. You know, there was serious. You know, people heard Shakespeare for the first time. 
You know, right. there's, a, there's a story that uh, one person, when they, they were so enamored with Shakespeare that uh, at the end of Hamlet, they wouldn't let the they wouldn't let this, the actors go off the stage until their screams of author, author wouldn't let the uh, wouldn't uh, bring out the author. So. All right, so you're going to be at Carnegie Hall on June 16th, and you're going to have a gala there. Yeah, and, we're uh, trying to raise money for the Yiddish theater for the future of Yiddish in this country. And uh, you got Eli Wallach and Ann Jackson going to make a show there? We're delighted that, that we're honoring them for their, for their lifelong work. We're also honoring Fred Zeidman, the chairman of the Holocaust Council, for his contributions and Barry Slotnick as well. I mean, these are people, these are major people in the, in the, in the, in the American field and Jewish field who have made a contribution to the Jewish name to the Jewish name. What, you know, th their connection to Yiddish, they have a feeling for Yiddish. They have a, so you, you know, don't think Yiddish will uh, disappear? We, it can't. It's a part of our DNA. It's, you know, whether we, whether we, we our mission is to transmit it to a, in a way, w in a way that young people have no nostalgic connection to it at all, can find something in it that's real. Years ago, if you would go to Israel, people didn't want to hear Yiddish. No. Well, we know that Yiddish. When, they when wanted to be sabras tough, and they didn't want to hear about the rak ivrit. And not only that, but uh, it Hebrew. reminded them of the diaspora yeah. where the Jew they thought was weak. Well, now we realize what a big mistake that was, because that generation of Israelis lost that culture. Now they're now they're interested in it again. Then it was a then it was maybe it was an important thing to do to to establish a uniformity to you know in terms of one language. You know, broke through in Yiddish, and I knew him fairly well. Shalom Sekunda. Sure. He wrote Bermir Bez Duchesne, sure. which was recorded by the Andrews sisters in days when Yiddish was not on the radio, yeah. on uh, in normal radio. And he broke through and yeah. uh, was a huge hit. Huge hit. And Sekunda Sammy, was actually a very talented uh, musician. Kahn, yeah, Sammy Kahn wrote the English, uh, the English melody for English words for it. Sammy Kahn and Saul Chaplin took it and... Are you still conducting yourself? Yeah, I, I have I have a chorale. That I have a I have a, a thirty voice uh, chorale that specializes in Yiddish music. We really? do we do Gilbert and Sullivan in Yiddish. You know we do we do you know important you know Yiddish dra dramatic works. So this is your life. It is. I've, I've I've made sh I, I I'm committed to making sure that my people of my generation and my kids' generation can. Can have can have access. Can to your this. kids speak Yiddish? Yeah, actually, I do speak Yiddish to my kids. You know who speaks Yiddish? The Hasidim. Yeah, but well, they don't go to your shows. No, actually, you'll be surprised. They come late. They come, <laughs> they come late. <laughs> yeah, they come Shabbos, but not Shabbos after Shabbos. Saturday night. Yeah, Shabbos. They come Saturday night at the you know after Shabbos, and they come. But they listen to a woman's voice. I th I don't think you're allowed some, to do that. Some do. Some do. Really? Yeah. No. It's a, it's a Jewish uh, law, if you're very orthodox, that right. you're not allowed to hear the voice of a woman. Right. And so many of these Hasidic uh, people don't, or men at least, don't go to hear music. But uh, I guess there's extremes, or not extremes, I mean, it's what you believe in. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's admirable what you're doing. It's cultural. Yeah. And you're keeping it alive. And we're, 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 we're trying to make sure that this language and culture, that, that people... Um, have some connection to, and we have we we produce a children's show called Kids in Yiddish. It's sort of a Saturday Night Live meets Sesame Street really? introduction for young parents, pe parents in their twenties and thirties, bringing their kids. They have no nostalgic connection to Yiddish, but they have they've heard about it. They bring their kids because they want to see it, and the kids love it. It's mostly in English, and we do uh, Yiddish versions of you know popular English melodies. So, it's called the Folksbina. Yeah, we'll, we'll be right back. We're back. This is a Leon Charney report. We've got the inimitable Mike Burston. On. Tonight is going to be a very emotional evening because I grew up in the Yiddish theater and Shalom Aleichem, you know, the father of Fiddler on the Roof, wrote in Yiddish. And so to me, it's more than uh, just a, a, a musical. And I've done Fiddler twice. I did Fiddler. Uh, the first production was quite unusual. It was in Salt Lake City, Utah. It was a Mormon production. Fiddler on the Roof. And I couldn't understand what the Mormons have to do with Fiddler on the Roof. 
but they believe that it's written for them. And they went through the same kind of uh, tragedy and troubles. They were driven from place to place. They had to schlep their wagons across the plains, and they wound up in Zion. They live in Zion. And they love this musical because it's tradition. So I did it once, uh, Tevye, in Salt Lake City, Utah, and then I did it again a second time in Westchester Broadway Theater. So I love the part. It's something that I, you know, I feel and I love. Well, Zero, Zero Mostel, the original uh, Tevye, was very close to the Yiddish Theater. And as a matter of fact, Zero performed at my bar mitzvah in 1958 at the National Theater on 2nd Avenue and Houston Street. My father, instead of throwing a party for my bar mitzvah, he rented a theater in the tradition of the Yiddish theater, and he sold out the theater. And he invited many of his friends to come and perform in my honor, my sister and myself, my twin sister. And one of them was Zero Mostel. He was a friend of my father's. And he came and performed. And Zero had the tradition of the Yiddish theater. And actually, Fiddler on the Roof, if it had been written 20 or 30 years earlier, it probably would have been a Yiddish musical and not an English musical because it came from the tradition of the Yiddish theater and all the shtickaluk that Zero used to do came from the Yiddish theater from 2nd Avenue. We are having one big celebration. It's our, the end of our 99th season, the beginning of our 100th season and we're launching it tonight uh, with the 50th anniversary of uh, Fiddler on the Roof. We all understand that Fiddler on the Roof had its roots in Sholem Aleichem, Tevye the Milchiker. He wrote several short stories that were then combined to put together this wonderful production of Fiddler on the Roof, and the rest is history. But it's fascinating to see how much of Sholem Aleichem is really in the uh, original Broadway production. Quite extraordinary uh, to have the amount of Yiddish in the play. We hear L'chaim, to life. We hear um, a multitude, mazel tov, mazel tov. There's a multitude of Yiddish words right in the, the lyrics and in the text of Fiddler on the Roof. Uh, I think what's fascinating about Fiddler on the Roof is it's very, very true to its roots. And there, was, there are no excuses being made in the production. They went all out, kept the spirit of the play, kept the Yiddish kite in the play, and that honesty, the honesty of the play is integral to its success.
always say, Chava, Chava, Chava. And I said, is, is that a blessing or a curse? And you said, curse me again. <laughs> changed your life and for me to work with you originally was and now you know it's still a big honor but um, when we did the Golden Land together I learned so much from Neva because of her experience and her life in the theater and then her experience in, uh, on Broadway and then I wound up afterwards working with Topol on Broadway and the Twenty-five years It's nice to 